We are okay. recording. All right. So hello, juniors. Ashlyn, say hi. So this is my daughter, Ashlyn. She's a junior. And she's already actually earned our junior camper badge uh, last year when we did our, our program last year. So, but she's going to go through the steps with you guys again today. And we're just going to talk about virtually camping. I know that the situation we're in, a lot of everybody can't go, well, everybody can't go camping right now. So it's kind of sad. Add, but that doesn't mean that you can't set up your tent or your blanket for in your guys' living room or, or even if you have a backyard that you can set it up and have fun in. So today we're going to talk about the supplies that you would take, what kind of camp meal you would make, and then how to build your fire. We're not going to build, actually start our fire because I live in an apartment complex and we can't have those type of fires. If we had a fire pit or a fire ring, we're not allowed to do that. So if you guys have a backyard and your parents have a fire pit or a fire ring, you may want to have them, uh, definitely have them help you, but ask them if you can actually guys do this part. So today we're just for that, the fire section, we're gonna just talk about the buildup and what you would need in supplies. And then we'll talk about the safety precautions as well. So the first thing is we're gonna talk about the supplies and planning our adventure. Everyone is going to have different supplies at home. What Ashlyn has is what she's got on hand. So it's important that you guys actually take out your notepad and pencil and make a list of things that you still need to buy or get for your camping trip. Okay, so Ashlyn, go ahead and talk about the supplies that you've packed. <laughs> When are you going to pull out first the stuff in the backpack? Give me. Right off the bat is a hat. What do you need the hat for? <laughs> to protect you from the sun. Right. Yeah, the last. There's another one. No, oh, what do you need those for? To protect your, your feet. Your feet. Your stinky, crusty, musty feet. <laughs> Okay. What are those? What are those? These are pajamas. <laughs> Why would you want to pack warm pajamas? Because you know you don't know it, that it might be cold. Right. Okay. <clears throat> What's that for? A trash bag. What is it for? What could it be used for? <laughs> to put your head in. You can use it as a what? <laughs> <laughs> as a raincoat. So girls, if you actually have a raincoat, then you can definitely take it. If not, you can use a trash bag. You'll just cut a hole at the top and make sure it's big enough to put your head through and you can wear it to keep you dry and warm. Okay, so she's bringing out another part of her pajamas. pajamas. So she's got a long sleeve pajama. Long. Well, long sleeve pajama top. What's that for? Rope. What's the rope for? To hang your no, I was about to say your to hang your dishes. Yeah. You can hang. <laughs> to hang your clothes. You hang your clothes, your towels. <laughs> you could hang your dishes. We're gonna talk about that later, remember? What's that for? It's a shirt. Why would you want to wear long sleeves? Uh huh. Cause like I said, you might get cold. You might get cold, but what else? Uh, to protect you from let's say poison ivy. Right, and to, it's uh, and um, 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 splinters. Yeah, and then the sun. <sighs> Help you protect you from the sun, right? Yeah, but that would make you even more harder, hot, hot, hotter. But it'd help protect protect your skin from getting a sunburn. Sure. What are those? What are those? 
What are those? Your <laughs> socks. What do you need the socks for? I didn't have anything to go with the shoes. But would you want to wear long socks or short socks? Long socks. Stop. <laughs> okay. What's that? <clears throat> it's a whistle. And what else is it? It's a compass. So what would you? It's a thermometer. What would you need the thermometer for? To um, see how how uh, angry your mom is. Thermometer. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> to see how hot it is. Okay, and then what's the compass for? I have it for so to tell you where you want to go. Right. Or, and then what would you need the whistle part for? To to tell everybody that something is is missing. Is missing, and then what else could it be used for? That's it. If someone can get, if someone gets hurt. No. Yes. No. Yes, Ashlyn. I thought it was only for if somebody got lost. No, that's one of the reasons. But if you, if you're with the Daisy and you guys are walking, uh, around your guys's campfire or not campfire, but around your your area, your camping area, you can blow the whistle if she gets hurt, right? So that way, adults can actually pay attention. Yeah. Okay. All right, what else is next? What do you have? Wow. These are pants. Okay. Why would you want to wear pants? Boy, do you want, do you want? Uh, why would you want to wear pants and not like shorts? Because you can get hurt. Right, okay. What else is in there? What else is in there? What's that? It's a bug spray. It's bug spray? It's bug spray. What do you need bug spray for? You need bug spray. <laughs> you need bug spray to protect you from bugs. To protect you from, and what's the other one that's in there? This right here is sunscreen. Sunscreen? It's sunscreen, not sunscreen. Okay. What would you need it for? To protect you from the sun. All plus, right. um, this can protect you from mosquitoes at night because if you don't put it on, then you're, then you're gonna go like this. Mm -hmm. There. Okay, what else is in there? That's it. Okay, so what do you. Oh. Backpack. <laughs> yes, backpack. So you put all that stuff in your backpack, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else is not that's not in your backpack? What would you want? Ow. What would you want that for? Water. Well, yes, you got to explain to them. Right? You need water. You need a water bottle, right? You can't drink the, can't drink the salt water. Oh, no, no, no. You can't drink the lake water. Right. That's just nasty. People go in there. No, we're not talking about that. I said just people go in there. Right. Okay, so you need a water bottle. Okay, what else? Ow. Don't bang my stuff, please. I'm not trying to. Okay. You forgot about the sleeping bag. Oh, did I? Yes, you did. Okay, so why would you need a sleeping bag? You want to sleep on the ground? Okay, well, you're supposed to explain this, remember? <clears throat> well, a sleeping bag is for basically a bank blanket. Blanket. <laughs> and they don't have a sleeping bag? Can they bring a, a blanket? Back. <laughs> sleeping bag. If they don't have a sleeping bag. <laughs> um, a blanket, a pillow. Okay. And a sleeping bag. What do we have that's not in your backpack? A first aid kit. Okay, so bring it out. Why would you want to bring that? You don't know if somebody can get hurt. So it's good to have a first aid kit? Yeah. Yeah, so that, okay. And then we talked about it earlier. Oh, why would you want to bring that? Drawing. Drawing. Oh, poems. Writing. writing. Right. Okay. Remember your personal care kit? It's underneath the clothes. Oh. Where's my toothbrush? It should be there somewhere. It's not here. Where are they going? <laughs> okay. So what is in your personal, personal Your personal hygiene items? So your yeah. personal care kit which is what does it include it includes a lotion <laughs> but, it includes a toothbrush and what else is in the tooth what the tooth and a washcloth <laughs> what's in the tooth <laughs> it's 
toothbrush. And what else? <laughs> toothpaste. Toothpaste. And does it have, let me see. Does it have a little, oh, it Floss. does. A little cover for your toothbrush, right? Okay, and then. Floss. So your towel. And then what else could you put in your personal care kit? Vacuum body wash. And then a hairbrush. Yeah. Right. Why okay. did you put that in there, Mom? Because I forgot to include it. Mm. Okay. And then what else could be in your personal care kit? It's that black thing that's sitting on the table right there in front of you. Black yeah, those black things. These black things. Yeah. What are they? <laughs> this is a scrunchie. <laughs> and I have names. Ashlyn, please stop. <laughs> okay. Scrunchies. Right, and a hair tie. Why would you want that? Because you need to put your hair up. Right, okay. Especially when you're around the fire, because when you start to build your fire, you need to make sure your hair is put up in a ponytail. The long hair has to be pulled back. Why would you want long hair pulled back? Because your hair can catch on fire and then you can become bald. Okay, so that's exactly right. All right, so that was the supplies that Ashlyn has. There are some things that she might be missing, which would be what? Can you think of? You need something at nighttime for the dark? A flashlight. A flashlight, right? Mom, I, have it. I don't know where it's In at. My room. Okay, so she's got it. Oh, we'll get it. No, 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 no. We're recording. So she has a flashlight that she needs to include. And then what else would you need for the flashlight? to make it work. Batteries. batteries. So some extra batteries. Okay. So that's what she has in her supplies. You guys might have more or might have different things. Uh, like I said, go ahead and write out a list of stuff that you think you would need. So basically this is just your stuff that you're using to camp with right now. You're packing your supplies. Of course, when you pack all together with your family or troop, you're going to have to include what else? Stuff. Like what? Kitchen. Oh, kitchen stuff. So like the cookware, mm -hmm. utensils, yeah. food. What's it? Where are you gonna sleep in? A tent. So you gotta include the tent, right? Okay. All right. So that's the supplies. Okay. So now we're gonna move on to the next activity. And then the next activity is going to be gaining a new camping skill. So this is where Ashlyn is going to show you guys about building the basics of the fire. So like I said, we can't actually build our fire or start it because we're not allowed to. But if you have a backyard and you guys have a fire pit and our fire ring and your parents are with you and they say it's okay, you guys can learn how to practice and start it, okay? So the supplies that you guys are going to need and if for some reason you don't have the supplies or firewood, you can use items that will substitute just to get the idea of building the frames. You can use pencils, um, you can use pipe cleaners, utensils, just to get the idea of what a fire would look like. Now when you go camping, of course, you're gonna want to have the firewood and the tinder and the kindling all, okay? So, um, we need to talk about some safety rules. So what did we say, Ashlyn, that what one of the safety rules was in a dealt with your hair? Fire. Hmm? Fire. No, we dealt, we talked about it with your hair. You need to put it back in a ponytail. Okay. So long girls who have long hair, then shoulder length must be pulled. It must be pulled back into a ponytail. So that's why I was telling everybody in the personal care kit, make sure you have some extra hair ties with you. And then what else should we have? Ashlyn? Huh? So we need to make sure that we have a bucket, a shovel, um, and then in the bucket is going to be water, so that way you guys can have something to extinguish the fire. You can also have a metal tool to stir the fire. So when you extinguish a fire, you don't just dump the full bucket of water over the fire. 
you can take a spray bottle or you can take a metal spoon and just grab a little bit at a time and sprinkle it around the fire kind of like this. And then when you take your, you can take your shovel or you can take a metal spoon and stir it up uh, with, of course, the guidance of your parents monitoring you. And then that way you can see when the coals or when the firewood goes down. That's how you actually extinguish a fire the proper way. So never build a fire in an area not meant for the fire. So when you guys go to a campground that's already been established, meaning that they have, they could have electricity, they have running water, they have the bathrooms there, and then they have a fire ring. So if my fire ring is say like right here, I'm gonna keep it right there. I'm not gonna move it over underneath over there. You need to make sure that your ring and your fire is being stayed right there. And even if it's a pit that you can move, you don't wanna move it. You wanna keep it exactly where it's at because it's supposed to be there. That's where the campground has designated it to be because it's probably a flat surface that has no trees or bushes or grass or anything around it. Another thing, why shouldn't we run around the fire, Ashlyn? Ashlyn, turn around, please. Yes, exactly. You can definitely hurt yourself if you're playing around the fire. You don't want to run, you want to walk, and you kind of want to keep some distance away from yourself. Another important thing is to make sure that your wood is not so close to your fire pit. So you wanna make sure that it's off into the distance or off to the side, so that way if something happens and the wind catches it, it doesn't catch your wood on fire. So those are the safety rules. There are of course other more in-depth ones that you guys can uh, research, but those are the basic ones that we have that we're gonna talk about today. So what I'm gonna give Ashlyn, and what you'll find attached to this video, is a document called fire building and it's wood and charcoal so basically it's going to show you how to do the the frames so you see that we have the tp the basic a and a log cabin and then it talks about preparing your site the safety and then building your fire so it talks about the three different types of or three different types of sizes that you would need for the wood so the tender kindling and fuel okay so ashlyn you want to show them what the tinder is what is it what's the tinder composed of what does it include dry, dry sticks and dry leaves dry sticks and dry leaves so yes it does it includes dry sticks and dry leaves what else could it include read the look at the handout Dry grass too. Dry grass, okay. So that is your tinder. What is your kindling? Kindling in dry, piece, in dry pieces of wood about one fourth to one half thick, which snap when you break them. Right, okay. So, can you grab it out, please? Those little pieces, yeah. So, those are kind of like our kindling. Of course, you might want it a little bit thinner because I know I definitely cannot break that over or break it in half. So, if you find something thinner, that would be good. But for today's workshop, we're just going to use this as our example. Okay, so. Go ahead and grab, which one are you gonna build? So Ashlyn's gonna build one of the frames. And then we'll talk about, once she builds her, her frame, we'll talk about doing um, the, the last part, which is our fuel. Which frame are you gonna build? Log cabin. The log cabin? Okay, I think I have enough pieces. Okay, so remember girls, if you don't have wood, that's okay, find a substitute that you can use. You can use pencils, um, anything that comes to your mind, just regular sticks, just to get the idea, 
behind building the frames. And like I said, this uh, fire building document will be added to the workshop. Look at your... I'm switching on. Okay. They don't go in the middle, so... No, no, you had it right. Look, it's a log cabin, so it's four pieces. Okay, and then which do these, where do these two pieces go? Yes, there you go. And where's the other one? Okay, so it's about your, that's your log cabin. So that's a log cabin. So she keeps, if we had more pieces, she would keep on building it. Um, and then what goes in the middle? What's that called? Tinder. Tinder. So the stuff that goes in the middle, no, that's not the middle. This is the middle right here. So that's the stuff that goes in the middle is the tinder. Can you break up some of the pieces, please? Okay, so she has all of the tinder inside of the middle of the log cabin. And then this is where she would try to start her fire. So you can take a match or the long fire starter to do that. Um, when we do our fire building outdoors skills workshop, it, we usually do the, the matches so that girls can get used to the idea of lighting a fire with the match. So that's how we would start it. And once we got it started, then we would go ahead and add the fuel on. So these thicker pieces of wood, that's our fuel because these pieces of wood will actually burn longer. Okay. Here, you want to put this up, the other one on the other side? It's fine, you can wash your hands afterwards. No, it's not that, I'm like, it's good. Oh. Okay, so that's how you would go ahead and build your fire. So you wanna make sure that you're not covering up your, your tinder completely, so that way it, the logs, the fuel will catch, to, catch the flames. So you need to make sure that your fire has oxygen so that it'll go up, okay? So Ashlyn's gonna build another frame. So which one are you gonna build next? The basic. Huh? Base A. Okay, the basic A. All right, go ahead, take your supplies out and build the basic A. There you go. So there's your basic A. So you would just build an A and then you would put your tender in the middle of it with the, you know, the dry leaves, dry grass, uh, the twigs. So that's your A. Do you want to try the TP one? If we have enough pieces. Don't worry about this part. Just try to see if you can get the TP part. The TP. You're doing log. It looks like you're doing log cabin. So do the TP. So take these out. Don't worry about this, this part right here, these pieces. Just do the TP part. So how would that look?
TP. Hold that piece. Hold it, because it's not going to stay. There you go. Now I'll put this piece. Put them together. Don't worry, I'm gonna. Okay, so that's gonna be something like your TP. So that's how you would build the TP one, and then the Kindle would go in the middle, just like how we did with our log cabin and basic A. So that's just. Tinder, Mom. That's what I said, Tinder. I said Kindle. Oh, the Tinder, sorry. The Tinder will go in the middle. So that's the TP one. So you guys decide on which. Like I said, if you guys have a fire pit at home or a fire ring that you can use to actually start it, then you can decide on which one you want to use, the, the TP, the basic A, or the log cabin. So that's how you do the fire. Um, so then on this worksheet or this handout, it actually talks about more in depth of you know, starting the fire, fire starters that you can make at home. Of course, you need to make sure that you have your parents' permission and that they're around when you do this sort of stuff. And then the safety while using the fire. Uh, and then of course it talks about the accidents that can happen and then putting out the fire, okay? So that will be included. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next activity which is talking about finding your inner camp chef. So this means cooking. So let's move the wood. Can you put the twigs off to the side? There we go. So we're gonna talk about our inner camp chef. Okay, so what you're going to do for this workshop to earn your badge or this part of the badge is you're going to take whatever canned foods that you have in at home and you're going to make a stew with them. So what we have is we've got a bunch of tomatoes, we have some corn and we have some green beans and we have some olives. So that's what we're going to put in there. I'm also going to put in because I have on hand, um, I have beef broth. So that's just kind of like beef flavored water. And then I'm also gonna put meat in it because that's what I have on hand. If you don't have meat or beef broth, that's fine. Just use your canned vegetables or whatever you have that's on hand. The challenge is for that this step is you make a meal that comes in a package or a can over your campfire or on your camp stove. Um, that way it's it's easy to bring. So you don't have to store refrigerated stuff in an ice chest or a cooler. So that's, yeah, that's what I'm gonna talk about. So in this part, it also talks about how, of course, when you guys go camping, a lot of girls like to do what, Ashlyn? Make what? Um, what, do, what are they called? S'mores. So we like to make s'mores. So the Girl Scouts have been accredited with the first s'mores recipe in 1927 in the Trailing and Tramping Handbook. That's actually pretty cool. So since 1927, we've been accredited. That's awesome. So you're going to go ahead and cook with the items that you have at home. When my family goes camping, we actually take this big pot because we make a lot of food for everybody so that way we have it throughout the day. So this is our stainless steel pot and you can see these in different colors, but the one that I have is got, it's like a dark blue with white specks on it. We also have, huh? We also have a coffee cup, coffee cups and a coffee maker to match that. Then you also have your Dutch oven. Can you lift up? The mess kit and the spoon. So that's a Dutch oven. The Dutch oven is where you can actually put it directly into, 
on top of your coals in the fire pit and actually have it cook, or you can place coals on top of it to cook. So then you need, so for the, can, for the inner chef, for the supplies you need is you need a big pot, you need a spoon to stir, Ashlyn, and then you're gonna need bowls and spoons to eat your stew with. So we're gonna talk about an item that you, we, you, we encourage you to bring because it's easy to store, easy to keep. And Ashlyn's gonna show you what that is. So in your supplies list of camping stuff, it would be nice to have one of these. This is called a mess kit and it comes with what? Here comes with plates. So this one comes with two plates. Silverware. Silverware. And bowls. Well, the, uh, they're collapsible cups, and they can be turned. You can use them as bowls or cups. They're actually pretty cool. And then what does it all come in? In uh, a bag. So what's the purpose of having a mess kit? Um, to, so you don't have to bring actual briefings and you want some, you can just rinse them out and they'll just draw in the bag. Exactly. So when you're done eating, what you can do is you can um, take your, a paper towel or rinse them off and put the food in the trash get all the food off, and then you can actually put it back into the bag and then hang up your bag that, with the rope that you brought, right? Another thing that we normally take when we go camping is we take clothespins because we use it to hang on the rope, right? The towels, and we can actually hang the mess kits up there. So that's what is included in supplies. So that would probably go with your kitchen stuff. So we're gonna move over to Starting, so Ashlyn's gonna go wash her hands because we still, even though we're still camping, we're gonna wash our hands before we mess with food, right? Right, okay, so take all of the food over to the kitchen. Got it? So you guys see that I actually have my meat, but like I said, whatever you guys have on hand is what you're going to use to cook your stew with. Just put that there. Can you get the big pot out? The one that, that's one in the lid. Yep. This one? No, the other one. So this is the big pot that Ashlyn's gonna cook in. Put that over there. Here. You have to plug it in. Okay, so there are some of the canned food that she has that need to be opened by a can opener. So it's important that in your kitchen gut, in your kitchen supplies that you take, you have a can opener, preferably one that you do by hand because you don't know if your campsite actually offers electricity or not. I'm just like that. Just pull them. Okay. So we're gonna yeah, you just pull it like this. Hold the can. That's what I do. Yeah, pull it back. I can't do it. Here, you got it. Well, it's it's if spill. you get it, if it gets spilled all over the counter, that's fine. We'll clean it up. 
don't pull it forward because you're gonna pop the tab off. Don't pull it forward. Pull it back. Can't get it open. Hold the camera. So go ahead and put your corn and tomatoes into the pot. Okay, so now you need to do the can opener. It'll so and it's thick. Here, give me that, and I'll show you. The can. And go up. You see this metal part right here? Yeah. It's on there. Okay. So this is how you do it. I'm gonna lift it up. And do you see this part right here? No, not the camera. That part right there. Yeah. That's the part that's going to go into the can, and it's going to make the hole, and it's going to cut. Okay. Yeah. All right. So do the green beans. <clears throat> Hang on. There. See, you got it, and it'll cut all the way through. And once it's done cutting, it'll stop. Oops. <laughs> really? It splashed. It everywhere. just splashed on me. It's okay. Here, open. Oh my God. Open the tomatoes. You gotta put it. There you go. Now close it. Open. Close it. Let me see. Hold the camera. Don't make it splash everywhere. Actually, hold the camera still, please. You want to try the olives? Do you want to try the olives? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Put it flat. The can flat. No, no, no. The can. Hold it flat. Don't hold it at an angle. Hold it flat. Yeah. Okay. Open it. Open it. Put it down. Open it. Give me here. Here. 
up on the camera. So Ashley needs to practice a little bit more with our can opener, but that's okay. And he knows you guys might need to practice too with more of your stuff. With can when you guys do the hand one, I suggest you, if, or if you do the hand one when you go camping, definitely practice because you can take some time over it. So, Ashlyn, now they're open. You're going to go ahead and put it in there. Okay, so we're going to turn the stove on. She's going to throw away the cans. And then you're going to start stirring it. So take one of the spoons, the, which one of you want to use? So stir it in and mix it up. Take your spoon and turn it the other way. There you go. It looks disgusting. <laughs> okay. Am I really going to eat this? Yes, we're all going to eat this. It's important, girls, whatever you make, that you at least try it because what if I this try? is a stew and, yeah, you're going to try and eat it. What if I try and I don't like it? We're still going to eat it. Yeah. So okay. So that's what you make for your stew. Like I said, we actually have meats that we're going to put in there. So then you would just cook it until it's heated up. And how do you know once it's heated up all the way through? You have to it <laughs> no. Well, you can use a, a, a thermometer. There's actual, they have one that has like the temperature and stuff, but because this pot is so big and there's a lot of it and you don't want to put your hand all the way down. So the best way that you can tell once it's warmed through all the way is when it starts to boil because that's when you can tell it's super hot, okay? Ashton has to take ups. So that's what you do with your stew. And like I said, we have meat, but we're gonna add the meat part later on into it. Okay, go ahead and turn it off. The other way, where's this off? There you go. So go ahead and take- Why even boiling? Well, for this the video, we're gonna stop and we're gonna move on to the next one but you're still gonna cook the meat. I'll show you how to do that later. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the other part of the meal. Well, not the other part of the meal. But. Starbucks. <laughs> so when you guys, it says that when it's cooking, you guys can put it, like I said, in that big old pot or the Dutch oven, and you can leave it and let it cook with the lid on. And then while it's cooking, because sometimes those, those type of meals will take a few minutes to cook and stuff, you don't want to ever walk away from it completely. So if you want to just sit around your camp or your fire that you have or with the coals and stuff so to watch it and have your parents watch it too, you guys will move on to the next part, which is talking about the seven principles of leave no trace. So this actual a document you'll find attached to the video too. It's a very long document. It's got many pages and it talks about leave no trace. And there are seven principles to it that girls and families and everybody should know about because it actually helps um, the camping out. So Ashlyn's going to talk about a couple different scenarios that can happen and uh, what a Girl Scout should know and do during those scenarios. But first, we're gonna talk about the first step, 
So the first, or the first principle of leave no trace is plan ahead. So Ashton, what does plan ahead talk to me? Plan ahead means to um, pack your stuff and like plan what you're gonna do next. Okay, so if we plan on going camping during winter and it's snowing, what should we prepare for? Warm clothes. Warm. Snow. Right, okay. And w remember when we talked about what kind of activities we wanted to do when we were there? Um, go skiing. Go skiing. Okay, so what would we need to plan for that? Um, warm clothes. Warm clothes, but what else? Scarf. When it uh, comes to how... Like, we got to pay for it, right? Money. Yeah. Saving up. Saving up. So we have to plan ahead, right? What's the second principle? Stay on track. What does that mean? It means you, have, you can't just um, go around. You have to stay on the trail. Why is it important to stay on the trail? You might get lost. You might get lost. And what else? You might get hurt. Okay. And then what's the other, what's the third principle? Carry out what you carry in. What does that mean? That means that you, whatever you bring in, you have to take out. Okay, so yeah. So whatever supplies that you bring in, you take out. Okay, everything. So if there is no bathroom there, do not leave the toilet paper there. You bring it out. You don't bury it. Okay. What's the next principle? Leave nature and you find it. What does that mean? I mean, you can't touch anything. You can't eat anything. You can't. Um, try to give uh, the animals food. Right. And you cannot bring an animal home. <laughs> What's the next principle? Be careful with fire. So what does that mean? You can't touch it. You can't play with it. You can't get close to it. Right. So you don't want to play around it, right? And then what do we talk about with your long hair? You can put it in one side. Yeah, and then, of course, you're always going to have an adult around, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if you're going to start the fire. You're going to, yeah, okay. All right, next principle. Respect wildlife. Respect wildlife. You can't throw paper around. You can't leave stuff behind. You can't touch the animals. You can't give them food. What else can't you do? You can't, um. What if you see, like, a deer and you want to go take a picture? You can't, you can't take pictures, you can't, because then you, you don't know what's going to happen next. Well, if you really, if you want to get really close, should you get really close? No, because it might bite you. Right, okay, so, but if you want to take a picture from afar, like way back on your trail, do you think that's okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, what's the next principle? Be consider, considerate of other visitors. What does that mean? You can't, you can't play, play your music too loud, you can't. Mm -hmm. Throw stuff around there. You can't put trash in there or where they're at. Would you want to walk through their campsite? No. Why? Because then that, they might be sleepy. You might disturb, disturb them. Right. Okay. Was that the last one? Yeah. Okay. So Ashlyn's going to talk about different scenarios. And the, you can find these on page 25 and 26 of the Leave No Trace handout. Like I said, that'll be attached to this video. So, Ashlyn, talk about the ones that you, the ones that you marked. Is it a bad trait or is it a good trait? Taking a wildflower, wildflower is a bad. Is a bad trait. Why is it a bad trait? Because you don't know if it's poison ivy or has poison in it. Okay. So you want to leave it as is, right? And which one does that fall under? Do you remember the seven? Which seven principles? Look at the paper. Leave nature as you find it. Leave wild, wildlife. Mm -hmm. Leave nature as you find it. Okay. What's another principle or what's another scenario? Washing in in the lake with soap. Is that a bad habit? It's bad. Okay. You don't know if there's fish in there, you might kill them. Right. Okay. So what principle does that fall under? Leave nature as you find it. And what else? Respect wildlife. Respect wildlife. Right. Okay. Starting a new fire ring. That's bad. That's a bad habit? Yeah. What does that fall under? What principle? Um, be careful with fire. Be careful with fire, right? Okay.
Yep. Okay, so what's another scenario? Getting close to wildlife for a photo opportunity. Okay, what does that fall under? Is that a bad is that a bad habit? Yes. Okay. What does it fall under? Um leave nature to find it. Respect wildlife. Why is that one a bad habit? Getting close to wildlife for a photo opportunity. Yeah, why is it a bad habit though? Because you don't know if um they might attack you. Mm hmm So can I take a picture if I'm on my trail? No, yes. Like far away? Yes. Yes. Okay, but I I can't get up close. No. Okay. All right. What's the next scenario? Camping on Lake Camping on Lake Shore. Your tent is, is low away. Is that a bad habit? Yes. Okay. Why else would it be a bad habit? If, if I mean, there. because you said that it'll float away, but no, what else? No, float away. Flow away. A flow away. Okay. What else? Why? Because um. You might get water in your tent. Okay. Do you think it might disturb some of the wildlife? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. So which one does that fall under? What, uh, what principle? Respect wildlife. And what else? Is there any, like, nature around if you're on a lake shore? Leave nature to find it. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we talked about... There's another one. We talked, hold on, we talked about camping at an established campground, right? What does that mean? Um, that you can't move anything. Right. If it's, anything. if it's already established, what does that mean? You can't cut, you can't move it anywhere else. Right. So, at these campsites, is, are there bathrooms? Yes. Is there running water for yeah. the bathrooms? Yes. Yeah. It, do we find sometimes that there's electricity? Yes. Yeah. So, those are established campgrounds, okay? Um, so that's, like I said, established campgrounds will have running water. Sometimes they'll have electricity. They'll have open areas for your fire pit or a fire pit that's already, a ring that's already created. Okay. All right. What's your next scenario? Okay. So is that, when we're going, when we're going camping, is it a bad or good habit? Why is it a bad habit? What, you can slip and fall. You can slip and fall. What does it go? What principle does it go under? You leave nature, you find it, and respect wildlife. Okay, and what else? Be considerate of other visitors. Okay, there's another one in there too. Carry out what you carry in. Carry out what you carry in, right? So we know, well, Ashley may not know, but right. sometimes there are some things that we can use to help uh, vegetation grow. So like if you no. bury it, yes, no. you can ha help. But in the sake of camping, we don't do that. Whatever we bring with us, it must go out with us. Okay. Was that your last prince or last scenario? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So she went over those scenarios. So you guys can actually at home play a game and act a skit out. Um, play with your family, and then when you guys actually meet with your troop, eventually talk about the different scenarios. So that way, if you ever come across them, you know exactly what to do. It's very important that you guys practice and know the seven principles of leave no trace. So now, the next activity that we're going to cover is we are going to going to head out on your trip so we know Ashlyn we know that we can't go camping right now right yep. and I know it kind of it's it's sad right it's not it's not sad no. you don't want to go camping I mean only for three days we that time yeah but we can't even do that right now I yeah so it is but, kind of sad huh but there's no wi-fi <laughs> that's, that's you will survive that's I'm not you were okay so we can't go camping right now but that's not going to stop you guys from going camping inside your living room what? and or in your backyard so i live in an apartment so i don't have a backyard i do have a little green space that i set up it's called a backyard. Well, that we set up ashlyn's tent and what i'm asking you girls to do is you don't have to stay in the tent or 
uh, sleep in the tents, but I want you guys to do an activity in the tents to fulfill this badge requirement. So you can draw, you can write, you can do your homework, you can, what else can you do in there? You could read. Oh yeah, if you're in your blanket fort in your living room, you can watch a movie with your family. You can even eat your stew meal that you cooked <laughs> with your family in your blanket fort or tent. So we're gonna go see Ashlyn's tent. Uh, but I don't have so our tent or her tent is outside in our little patio area. It's called the backyard. Oh backyard. It's a small backyard. So you can see Ashlyn's tent. <laughs> She's got it all set up. So that's her tent, and that's what you guys would finish your last step in. Like I said, if you don't have a tent, you can use what? A blanket fort. You can do a blanket fort. And what do you? What kind of supplies do you need for a blanket fort, Ashlyn? Oh. And what else? Blanket. And food. Food. And what else? Stuffed animals. Anything that makes you guys comfortable, okay? And set it up however you want to set it up. So that's what you guys do for the last step in your badge. Is just hang out in your tent, draw, read, play a game, whatever you girls want to do, okay? And that is it. So now we're gonna. Addicted medicine. No, that's it. We're gonna head back in. Talk to Madison. Hi, Madison. Hi, Madison. Okay, so we're gonna go back in. <clears throat> so that's all we have for. The, jun the virtual junior camper workshop. And that's it. So let me. Okay, girls, thank you for attending. Uh, we hope to see you very soon. And when you guys actually get to go camping, make sure you apply all the skills that you learn in this workshop for your future camp trips. Bye. Yeah. You just look like a the girls. Up.